The record of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham fathered Isaac, Isaac fathered Jacob, and Jacob fathered Judah and his brothers. Judah fathered Perez and Zerah by Tamar, Perez fathered Hezron, and Hezron fathered Ram. Ram fathered Ammonadab, Ammonadab fathered Nashon, and Nashon fathered Salmon. Salmon fathered Boaz by Rahab, Boaz fathered Obed by Ruth, and Obed fathered Jesse. Jesse fathered David the king. David fathered Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon fathered Rehoboam, Rehoboam fathered Abijah, and Abijah fathered Asa. Asa fathered Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat fathered Joram, and Joram fathered Isaiah. Isaiah fathered Jotham, Jotham fathered Ahaz, and Ahaz fathered Hezekiah. Hezekiah fathered Manasseh, Manasseh fathered Ammon, and Ammon fathered Josiah. Josiah fathered Jeconiah and his brothers, at the time of the deportation to Babylon. After the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah fathered Shealtiel, and Shealtiel fathered Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel fathered Abihad, Abihad fathered Eliakim, and Eliakim fathered Azor. Azor fathered Zadok, Zadok fathered Achim, and Achim fathered Eliud. Eliud fathered Eliezer, Eliezer fathered Matthan, and Matthan fathered Jacob. Jacob fathered Joseph the husband of Mary, by whom Jesus was born, who is called the Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David are fourteen generations, from David to the deportation to Babylon, fourteen generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, fourteen generations. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah was as follows, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together she was found to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, since he was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had thought this over, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place so that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet would be fulfilled. Behold, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which translated means, God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took Mary as his wife but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for from you will come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star, which they had seen in the east, went on ahead of them until it came to a stop over the place where the child was to be found. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And after they came into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, 
and they fell down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And after being warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Now when they had gone, behold, an angel of the Lord Asterisk appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up. Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up and took the child and his mother while it was still night, and left for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, this happened so that what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet would be fulfilled, out of Egypt I called my son. Then when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, he became very enraged, and sent men and killed all the boys who were in Bethlehem and all its vicinity who were two years old or under, according to the time which he had determined from the Magi. Then what had been spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and she refused to be comforted, because they were no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord Asterisk appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Then after being warned by God in a dream, he left for the regions of Galilee, and came and settled in a city called Nazareth. This happened so that what was spoken through the prophets would be fulfilled, he will be called a Nazarene. Now in those days John the Baptist Asterisk came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is the one referred to by Isaiah the prophet when he said, The voice of one calling out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John himself had a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. At that time Jerusalem was going out to him, and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan, six and they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River, as they confessed their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You offspring of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore produce fruit consistent with repentance. And do not assume that you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I tell you that God is able, from these stones, to raise up children for Abraham. And the axe is already laid at the root of the trees, therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit is being cut down and thrown into the fire. As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor, and he will gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus Asterisk arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have the need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me. But Jesus, answering, said to him, Allow it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he asterisk allowed him. After he was baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and settling on him. And behold, a voice from the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
And after he had fasted for forty days and forty nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Then the devil asterisk took him along into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple. And he asterisk said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels orders concerning you, and, on their hands they will lift you up, so that you do not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, On the other hand, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil asterisk took him along to a very high mountain and asterisk showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you, if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus asterisk said to him, Go away, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and serve him only. Then the devil asterisk left him, and behold, angels came and began to serve him. Now when Jesus heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This happened so that what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet would be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, on the other side of the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who were sitting in darkness saw a great light, and those who were sitting in the land and shadow of death, upon them a light dawned. From that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he asterisk said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father, and followed him. Jesus was going about in all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. And the news about him spread throughout Syria, and they brought to him all who were ill, those suffering with various diseases and severe pain, demon-possessed, people with epilepsy, and people who were paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and Jerusalem, and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great, for in this same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by people. 
You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Your light must shine before people in such a way that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not presume that I came to abolish the law or the prophets, I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of a letter shall pass from the law, until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever nullifies one of the least of these commandments, and teaches others to do the same, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness far surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that the ancients were told, You shall not murder, and whoever commits murder shall be answerable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be answerable to the court, and whoever says to his brother, You good for nothing, shall be answerable to the supreme court, and whoever says, You fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your offering there before the altar and go, first be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offering. Come to good terms with your accuser quickly, while you are with him on the way to court, so that your accuser will not hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the officer, and you will not be thrown into prison. Truly I say to you, you will not come out of there until you have paid up the last quadrants. You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery, 28 But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now if your right eye is causing you to sin, tear it out and throw it away from you, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand is causing you to sin, cut it off and throw it away from you, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Now it was said, whoever sends his wife away is to give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except for the reason of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that the ancients were told, You shall not make false vows, but shall fulfill your vows to the Lord. But I say to you, Take no oath at all, neither by heaven, for it is the throne of God. Nor by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, nor be Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you take an oath by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. But make sure your statement is, yes, yes or no, no, anything beyond these eyes of evil origin. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye, and tooth for tooth. 39 But I say to you, do not show opposition against an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other toward him also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks of you, and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may prove yourselves to be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Even the tax collectors, do they not do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Even the Gentiles, do they not do the same? 
Therefore you shall be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Take care not to practice your righteousness in the sight of people, to be noticed by them, otherwise you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, so that they will be praised by people. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your charitable giving will be in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they will be seen by people. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But as for you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not use thoughtless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray, then, in this way, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive other people for their offenses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive other people, then your Father will not forgive your offenses. Now whenever you fast, do not make a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they distort their faces so that they will be noticed by people when they are fasting. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But as for you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. So that your fasting will not be noticed by people but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so then, if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness! No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life, as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body, as to what you will put on. Is life not more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the sky, that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather crops into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more important than they? And which of you by worrying can add a single day to his life span? And why are you worried about clothing? Notice how the lilies of the field grow, they do not labor nor do they spin thread for cloth. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith! Do not worry then, saying, What are we to eat, or, What are we to drink, or, What are we to wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided to you. 
So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not judge, so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged, and by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and look, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, or they will trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you, seek, and you will find, knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. Or what person is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf of bread will give him a stone? Ten or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? So if you, despite being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? In everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is narrow and the way is constricted that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of the false prophets, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits, grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Twenty-two many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, leave me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, and acts on them, will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine, and does not act on them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell, and its collapse was great. When Jesus had finished these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one who had authority, and not as their scribes. When Jesus came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. Two and a man with leprosy came to him and bowed down before him, and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out with his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus asterisk said to him, See that you tell no one, but go, show yourself to the priest and present the offering that Moses commanded, as a testimony to them. And when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, begging him, and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, terribly tormented. Jesus asterisk said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof, but just say the word, 
and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, with soldiers under me, and I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my slave, Do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those who were following, Truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west, Andre Klein at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be thrown out into the outer darkness, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it shall be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. When Jesus came into Peter's home, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick in bed with a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and waited on him. Now when evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were ill. This happened so that what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet would be fulfilled, he himself took our illnesses and carried away our diseases. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to depart to the other side of the sea. Then a scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus asterisk said to him, The foxes have holes and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And another of the disciples said to him, Lord, allow me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus asterisk said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. When he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, a violent storm developed on the sea, so that the boat was being covered by the waves, but Jesus himself was asleep. And they came to him and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. He asterisk said to them, Why are you afraid, you men of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. The men were amazed, and said, What kind of a man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? And when he came to the other side into the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men confronted him as they were coming out of the tombs. They were so extremely violent that no one could pass by that way. And they cried out, saying, What business do you have with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now there was a herd of many pigs feeding at a distance from them. And the demons begged him, saying, If you are going to cast us out, send us into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. And they came out and went into the pigs, and behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. And the herdsmen ran away, and went to the city and reported everything, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. Getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over the Sea of Galilee and came to his own city. And they brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a stretcher. And seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man who was paralyzed, Take courage, son, your sins are forgiven. And some of the scribes said to themselves, this man is blaspheming. And Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why are you thinking evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, then he asterisk said to the paralyzed man, Get up, pick up your stretcher and go home. And he got up and went home. But when the crowd saw this, they were awestruck, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. As Jesus went on from there, 
he saw a man called Matthew sitting in the tax collector's office, and he asterisk said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. Then it happened that as Jesus was reclining at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and began dining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why is your teacher eating with the tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. Now go and learn what this means, I desire compassion rather than sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John Asterisk came to him, asking, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The attendants of the groom cannot mourn as long as the groom is with them, can they? But the days will come when the groom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. But no one puts a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and a worse tear results. Nor do people put new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wineskins burst, and the wine pours out and the wineskins are ruined, but they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. While he was saying these things to them, behold, a synagogue official came and bowed down before him, and said, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will become alive again. Jesus got up from the table and began to accompany him, along with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for twelve years came up behind him, and touched the border of his cloak. For she was saying to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will get well. But Jesus, turning and seeing her, said, Daughter, take courage, your faith has made you well. And at once the woman was made well. When Jesus came into the official's house and saw the flute players and the crowd in noisy disorder, he said, Leave, for the girl has not died, but is asleep. And they began laughing at him. But when the crowd had been sent out, he entered and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And this news spread throughout that land. As Jesus went on from there, two men who were blind followed him, crying out, Have mercy on us, son of David. And after he entered the house, the men who were blind came up to him, and Jesus asterisk said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? They asterisk said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, It shall be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him throughout that land. And as they were going out, Behold, a demon-possessed man who was unable to speak was brought to him. And after the demon was cast out, the man who was previously unable to speak talked, and the crowds were amazed, and were saying, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees were saying, He casts out the demons by the ruler of the demons. Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness. Seeing the crowds, he felt compassion for them, because they were distressed and downcast, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he asterisk said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to heal every disease and every sickness. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, the first, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, 
Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus. Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out after instructing them, saying, Do not go on a road to Gentiles, and do not enter a city of Samaritans. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with leprosy, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. Do not acquire gold, or silver, or copper for your money belts. Or a bag for your journey, or even two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, for the worker is deserving of his support. 11 And whatever city or village you enter, inquire who is worthy in it, and stye at his house until you leave that city. As you enter the house, give it your greeting. If the house is worthy, see that your blessing of peace comes upon it. But if it is not worthy, take back your blessing of peace. And whoever does not receive you nor listen to your words, as you leave that house or city, shake the dust off your feet. Truly I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment, than for that city. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be as wary as serpents, and as innocent as doves. But be on guard against people, for they will hand you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you will even be brought before governors and kings on my account, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given you in that hour. For it is not you who are speaking, but it is the Spirit of your Father who is speaking in you. Now brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. But whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next, for truly I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he may become like his teacher, and the slave like his master. If they have called the head of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they insult the members of his household? So do not fear them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the darkness, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are two sparrows not sold for anisarian? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not fear, you are more valuable than a great number of sparrows. Therefore, everyone who confesses me before people, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before people, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I came to turn a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be the members of his household. The one who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and the one who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 38 And the one who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. 39 The one who has found his life will lose it, and the one who has lost his life on my account will find it. The one who receives you receives me, and the one who receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, 
and the one who receives a righteous person in the name of a righteous person shall receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones just a cup of cold water to drink in the name of a disciple, truly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. When Jesus had finished giving instructions to his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. Now while in prison, John heard about the works of Christ, and he sent word by his disciples. And said to him, Are you the coming one, or are we to look for someone else? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you hear and see. Those who are blind receive sight and those who limp walk, those with leprosy are cleansed and those who are deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have Thegisbel preached to them. And blessed Iceni person who does not take offense at me. As these disciples of John were going away, Jesus began speaking to the crowds about John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Those who wear soft clothing are in king's palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and one who is more than a prophet. This is the one about whom Idas written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven has been treated violently, and violent men take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, John himself is Elijah who was to come. The one who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces, who call out to the other children. And say, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance, we sang a song of mourning, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a heavy drinker, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Then he began to reprimand the cities in which most of his miracles were done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the miracles that occurred in you had occurred in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Nevertheless I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will not be exalted to heaven, will you? You will be brought down to Hades. For if the miracles that occurred in you had occurred in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. Nevertheless I say to you that it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment, than for you. At that time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this way was well pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son determines to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is comfortable, and my burden is light. At that time Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples became hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat. Now when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on a Sabbath. 
But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he became hungry, he and his companions? How he entered the house of God, and they ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for him to eat nor for those with him, but for the priests alone. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple violate the Sabbath, and yet are innocent? But I say to you that something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire compassion rather than sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Departing from there, he went into their synagogue. And a man was there whose hand was withered. And they questioned Jesus, asking, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? So that they might bring charges against him. But he said to them, What man is there among you who has a sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will he not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable then is a person than a sheep? So then, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he asterisk said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and it was restored to normal, like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him, as to how they might destroy him. But Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there. Many followed him, and he healed them all and warned them not to tell who he was. This happened so that what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet would be fulfilled. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul delights, I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel, nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bent reed he will not break off, and a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish, until he leads justice to victory. And in his name the Gentiles will hope. Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and unable to speak was brought to Jesus, and he healed him so that the man who was unable to speak talked and could see. And all the crowds were amazed and were saying, This man cannot be the son of David, can he? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, This man casts out demons only by Beelzebul the ruler of the demons. And knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan is casting out Satan, he has become divided against himself, how then will his kingdom stand? And if by Beelzebul I cast out the demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if I cast out the demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or, how can anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property, unless he first ties up the strong man? And then he will plunder his house. The one who is not with me is against me, and the one who does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. Either assume the tree to be good as well as its fruit good, or assume the tree to be bad as well as its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. 34 You offspring of vipers, how can you, being evil, express any good things? For the mouth speaks from that which fills the heart. The good person brings out of his good treasure good things, and the evil person brings out of his evil treasure evil things. But I tell you that for every careless word that people speak, they will give an account of it on the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. 
But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation craves a sign, and so no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. For just as Jonah was in the stomach of the Sea monster for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. The men of Nineveh will stand up with this generation at the judgment, and will condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise up with this generation at the judgment and will condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. Now when the unclean spirit comes out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came, and when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they come in and live there, and the last condition of that person becomes worse than the first. That is the way it will also be with this evil generation. While he was still speaking to the crowds, behold, his mother and brothers were standing outside, seeking to speak to him. Someone said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, seeking to speak to you. But Jesus replied to the one who was telling him and said, Who is my mother, and who are my brothers? And extending his hand toward his disciples, he said, Behold, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my brother, and sister, and mother. On that day Jesus had gone out of the house and was sitting by the sea. Two and large crowds gathered to him, so he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd was standing on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on the rocky places, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up immediately, because they had no depth of soil. But after the sun rose, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. But others fell on the good soil and yielded a crop, some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty times as much. The one who has ears, let him hear. And the disciples came up and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus answered them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. Twelve for whoever has, to him more shall be given, and he will have an abundance, but whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because while seeing they do not see, and while hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in their case the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, You shall keep on listening, but shall not understand, and you shall keep on looking, but shall not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull, with their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes, otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and return, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Listen then to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one sown with seed beside the road. The one sown with seed on the rocky places, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary, and when affliction or persecution occurs because of the word, 
immediately he falls away. And the one sown with seed among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, and the anxiety of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But the one sown with seed on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces, some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty times as much. Jesus presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and left. And when the wheat sprouted and produced grain, then the weeds also became evident. And the slaves of the landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field, how then does it have weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The slaves asterisk said to him, Do you want us, then, to go and gather them up? But he asterisk said, No, while you are gathering up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Allow both to grow together until the harvest, and at the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather up the weeds and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. He presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a person took and sowed in his field. And this is smaller than all the other seeds, but when it is fully grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the sky come and nest in its branches. He spoke another parable to them, The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three zata of flour until it was all leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables, and he did not speak anything to them without a parable. This was so that what was spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled, I will open my mouth in parables, I will proclaim things hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he said, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. And the field is the world, and as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, and the weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. So just as the weeds are gathered up and burned with fire, so shall it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks, and those who commit lawlessness. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth like the sun in the kingdom of their father. The one who has ears, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid again, and from joy over it he goes and sells everything that he has, and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold everything that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. And when it was filled, they pulled it up on the beach, and they sat down and gathered the good fish into containers, but the bad they threw away. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth and remove the wicked from among the righteous. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They asterisk said to him, Yes. And Jesus said to them, Therefore every scribe who has become a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a head of a household, who brings out of his treasure new things and old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he departed from there. And he came to his hometown and began teaching them in their synagogue, with the result that they were astonished and said, 
Where did this man acquire this wisdom and these miraculous powers? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is his mother not called Mary, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man acquire all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not dishonored except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. At that time Herod the Tetrarch heard the news about Jesus. And said to his servants, This is John the Baptist, he himself has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. For when Herod had John arrested, he bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had been saying to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Although Herod wanted to put him to death, he feared the crowd, because they regarded John as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. So much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. And after being prompted by her mother, she asterisk said, Give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. And although he was grieved, the king commanded it to be given because of his oaths and his dinner guests. He sent word and had John beheaded in the prison. And his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. John's disciples came and took away the body and buried it, and they went and reported to Jesus. Now when Jesus heard about John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a secluded place by himself, and when the people heard about this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When he came ashore, he saw a large crowd, and felt compassion for them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This place is secluded and the hour is already past to eat, send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go, you give them something to eat. They asterisk said to him, we have nothing here except five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And ordering the crowds to sit down on the grass, he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looked up toward heaven. He blessed the food and breaking the loaves, he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve full baskets. There were about five thousand men who ate, besides women and children. Immediately afterward he compelled the disciples to get into the boat and to go ahead of him to the other side, while he sent the crowds away. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray, and when it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night he came to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter responded and said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened, and when he began to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out with his hand and took hold of him, and Asterisk said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped. And those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are truly God's son. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Genesaret. 
And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent word into all that surrounding region and brought to him all who were sick. And they pleaded with him that they might just touch the border of his cloak, and all who touched it were cured. Then some Pharisees and scribes asterisk came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Two foot why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered and said to them, Why do you yourselves also break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother and, the one who speaks evil of father or mother is to put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever I have that would help you has been given to God. He is not to honor his father or mother. And by this you have invalidated the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, rightly did Isaiah prophesy about you, by saying, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. And in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. After Jesus called the crowd to him, he said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what enters the mouth that defile the person, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles the person. Then the disciples came and asterisk said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this statement? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father did not plant will be uprooted. Leave them alone, they are blind guides of blind people. And if a person who is blind guides another who is blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. Jesus said, are you also still lacking in understanding? Do you not understand that everything that goes into the mouth passes into the stomach, and ice eliminated? But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and those things defile the person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, acts of adultery, other immoral sexual acts, thefts, false testimonies, and slanderous statements. These are the things that defile the person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile the person. Jesus went away from there, and withdrew into the region of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that region came out and began to cry out, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he did not answer her with even a word. And his disciples came up and urged him, saying, Send her away, because she keeps shouting at us. But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. Yet he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. But please help, for even the dogs feed on the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, O woman, your faith is great, it shall be done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed at once. Departing from there, Jesus went along the Sea of Galilee, and after going up on the mountain, he was sitting there. And large crowds came to him bringing with them those who were limping, had impaired limbs, were blind, or were unable to speak, and many others, and they laid them down at his feet, and he healed them. So the crowd was astonished as they saw those who were unable to speak talking, those with impaired limbs restored, those who were limping walking around, and those who were blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Now Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel compassion for the people, because they have remained with me now for three days and have nothing to eat, and I do not want to send them away hungry, for they might faint on the way. The disciples asterisk said to him, Where would we get so many loaves in this desolate place to satisfy such a large crowd? And Jesus asterisk said to them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven, 
and a few small fish. And he directed the people to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fish, and after giving thanks, he broke them and started giving them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up what was left over of the broken pieces, seven large baskets full. And those who ate were four thousand men, besides women and children. And sending away the crowds, Jesus got into the boat and came to the region of Magadan. The Pharisees and Sadducees came up, and putting Jesus to the test, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he replied to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, there will be a storm today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but are you unable to discern the signs of the times? An evil and adulterous generation wants a sign, and so a sign will not be given to it, except the sign of Jonah. And he left them and went away. And the disciples came to the other side of the sea, but they had forgotten to bring any bread. And Jesus said to them, Watch out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They began to discuss this among themselves, saying, He said that because we did not bring any bread. But Jesus, aware of this, said, You men of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet understand nor remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets you picked up? nor the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many large baskets you picked up. How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you about bread? But beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not say to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. He asterisk said to them, But who do you yourselves say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples strict orders that they were to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and to suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and to be killed, and to be raised up on the third day. And yet Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's purposes, but men's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what good will it do a person if he gains the whole world, but forfeits his soul? Or what will a person give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and will then repay every person according to his deeds. Truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Six days later, Jesus asterisk took with him Peter and James, 
and his brother John, and Asterisk led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Peter responded and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you want, I will make three tabernacles here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased, listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground and were terrified. And Jesus came to them and touched them and said, Get up, and do not be afraid. And raising their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. When they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. Ten and his disciples asked him, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he answered and said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah already came, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wanted. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. When they came to the crowd, a man came up to Jesus, falling on his knees before him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, because he has seizures and suffers terribly, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, You unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was healed at once. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? And he asterisk said to them, Because of your meager faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. And while they were gathering together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is going to be handed over to men. And they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. And they were deeply grieved. Now when they came to Capernaum, those who collected the two drachma tax came to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the two drachma tax? 25 He asterisk said, Yes. And when he came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first, saying, What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth collect customs or poll tax, from their sons or from strangers? When Peter said, from strangers, Jesus said to him, Then the sons are exempt. However, so that we do not offend them, go to the sea and throw in a hook, and take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a stator. Take that and give it to them for you and me. At that time the disciples came to Jesus and said, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called a child to himself and set him among them. And said, Truly I say to you, unless you change and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So whoever will humble himself like this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such child in my name, receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me Tosin, it is better for him that a heavy millstone be hung around his neck, and that he be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of its stumbling blocks! For it is inevitable that stumbling blocks come, but woe to the person through whom the stumbling block comes. And if your hand or your foot is causing you to sin, cut it off and throw it away from you, 
it is better for you to enter life maimed or without a foot, than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye is causing you to sin, tear it out and throw it away from you. It is better for you to enter life with one eye, than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fiery hell. See that you do not look down on one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If any man has a hundred sheep, and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains, and go and search for the one that is lost? And if it turns out that he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that have not gone astray. So it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven for one of these little ones to perish. Now if your brother sins, go and show him his fault in private, if he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen to you, take one or two more with you, so that on the testimony of two or three witnesses every matter may be confirmed. And if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church, and if he refuses to listen even to the church, he is to be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how many times shall my brother sin against me and I still forgive him? Up to seven times. Jesus asterisk said to him, I do not say to you, up to seven times, but up to seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his slaves. And when he had begun to settle them, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his master commanded that he be sold, along with his wife and children and all that he had, and repayment be made. So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, have patience with me and I will repay you everything. And the master of that slave felt compassion, and he released him and forgave him the debt. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, Have patience with me and I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until he would pay back what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their master all that had happened. Then summoning him, his master Asterisk said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave, in the same way that I had mercy on you. And his master, moved with anger, handed him over to theatres until he would repay all that was owed him. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you, if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. When Jesus had finished these words, he left Galilee and came into the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. Some Pharisees came to Jesus, testing him and asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? And he answered and said, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no person is to separate. They asterisk said to him, Why, then, did Moses command to give her a certificate of divorce and send her away? He asterisk said to them, 
because of your hardness of heart Moses permitted you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it has not been this way. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another woman commits adultery. The disciples asterisk said to him, If the relationship of the man with his wife is like this, it is better not to marry. But he said to them, Not all men can accept this statement, but only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who were born that way from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by people, and there are also eunuchs who made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. The one who is able to accept this, let him accept it. Then some children were brought to him so that he would lay his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Leave the children alone, and do not forbid them to come to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. After laying his hands on them, he departed from there. And someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do so that I may obtain eternal life? And he said to him, Why are you asking me about what is good? There is only one who is good, but if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Then he asterisk said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not commit murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man asterisk said to him, All these I have kept, what am I still lacking? Jesus said to him, If you want to be complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But when the young man heard this statement, he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were very astonished and said, Then who can be saved? And looking at them, Jesus said to them, With people this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter responded and said to him, Behold, we have left everything and followed you, what then will there be for us? And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, that you who have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms on account of my name, will receive many times as much, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last, first. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. When he had agreed with the laborers for Adenarius for the day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to those he said, You go into the vineyard also, and whatever is right, I will give you. And so they went. Again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour, and did the same thing. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing around, and he asterisk said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day long? They asterisk said to him, Because no one hired us. He asterisk said to them, You go into the vineyard too. Now when evening came, the owner of the vineyard asterisk said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, starting with the last group to the first. When those hired about the eleventh hour came, each one received Adenarius. And so when those hired first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they grumbled at the landowner, saying, These who were hired last worked only one hour, 
and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day's work and the scorching heat. But he answered and said to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong, did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go, but I want to give to this last person the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I want with what is my own? Or is your eye envious because I am generous? So the last shall be first, and the first, last. As Jesus was about to go up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves, and on the road he said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death. And they will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock and flog and crucify, and on the third day he will be raised up. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons, bowing down and making a request of him. And he said to her, What do you desire? She asterisk said to him, Say that in your kingdom these two sons of mine shall sit, one at your right, and one at your left. But Jesus replied, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They asterisk said to him, We are able. He asterisk said to them, My cup you shall drink, but to sit at my right and at my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. And after hearing this, the other ten disciples became indignant with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles domineer over them, and those in high position exercise authority over them. I dis not this way among you, but whoever wants to become prominent among you shall be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you shall be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. And two people who were blind, sitting by the road, hearing that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. But the crowd sternly warned them to be quiet, yet they cried out all the more, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus stopped and called them, and said, What do you want me to do for you? They asterisk said to him, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes, and immediately they regained their sight and followed him. When they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethphage, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them on immediately. Now this took place so that what was spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and laid their cloaks on them, and he sat on the cloaks. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. Now the crowds going ahead of him, and those who followed, were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. When he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is Jesus the prophet, from Nazareth in Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all those who were selling and buying on the temple grounds, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he asterisk said to them, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. 
And those who were blind and those who limped came to him in the temple area, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant. And they said to him, Do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus asterisk said to them, Yes. Have you never read, from the mouths of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise for yourself? And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, and spent the night there. Now in the early morning, when he was returning to the city, he became hungry. And seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves alone, and he asterisk said to it, No longer shall there ever be any fruit from you. And at once the fig tree withered. Seeing this, the disciples were amazed and asked, How did the fig tree wither all at once? And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive it all. When he entered the temple area, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him while he was teaching, and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? But Jesus responded and said to them, I will also ask you one question, which, if you tell me, I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John was from what source, from heaven or from men? And they began considering the implications among themselves, saying, If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, Then why did you not believe him? But if we say, from men, we fear the people, for they all regard John as a prophet. And answering Jesus, they said, We do not know. He also said to them, Neither am I telling you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in the vineyard. But he replied, I do not want to. Yet afterward he regretted it and went. And the man came to his second son and said the same thing, and he replied, I will, sir, and yet he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They asterisk said, the first. Jesus asterisk said to them, Truly I say to you that the tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and prostitutes did believe him, and you, seeing this, did not even have second thoughts afterward so as to believe him. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it, and dug a wine press in it, and built a tower, and he leased it to vine growers and went on a journey. And when the harvest time approached, he sent his slaves to the vine growers to receive his fruit. And the vine growers took his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they did the same things to them. But afterward he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine growers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir, come, let's kill him and take possession of his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine growers? They asterisk said to him, He will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other vine growers, who will pay him the fruit in the proper seasons. Jesus asterisk said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures, a stone which the builders rejected, this has become the chief cornerstone, this came about from the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes? Therefore I say to you, 
the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruit. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and on whomever it falls, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they understood that he was speaking about them. And although they sought to arrest him, they feared the crowds, since they considered him to be a prophet. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like he a king who held a wedding feast for his son. And he sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast, and they were unwilling to come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fattened cattle are all butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went their separate ways, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his slaves and treated them abusively, and then killed them. Now the king was angry, and he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he asterisk said to his slaves, The wedding feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. So go to the main roads, and invite whomever you find there to the wedding feast. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. But when the king came in to look over the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. And he asterisk said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Tie his hands and feet, and throw him into the outer darkness, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth in that place. For many are called, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees went and plotted together how they might trap him in what he said. And they asterisk sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and teach the way of God in truth, and do not care what anyone thinks, for you are not partial to anyone. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it permissible to pay a poll tax to Caesar, or not? But Jesus perceived their malice, and said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the poll tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he asterisk said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They asterisk said to him, Caesar's. Then he asterisk said to them, Then pay to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And hearing this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. On that day some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and questioned him. Saying, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies having no children, his brother as next of kin shall marry his wife, and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us, and the first married and died, and having no children, he left his wife to his brother. It was the same also with the second brother, and the third, down to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her in marriage. But Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, since you do not understand the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But regarding the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, 
which is the great commandment in the law. And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They asterisk said to him, The son of David. He asterisk said to them, Then how does David in the Spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet? Therefore, if David calls him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to offer him a word in answer, nor did anyone dare from that day on to ask him any more questions. Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. Therefore, whatever they tell you, do and comply with it all, but do not do as they do, for they say things and do not do them. And they tie up heavy burdens and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are unwilling to move them with so much as their finger. And they do all their deeds to be noticed by other people, for they broaden their phylacteries and lengthen the tassels of their garments. And they love the place of honor at banquets, and the seats of honor in the synagogues, and personal greetings in the marketplaces, and being called rabbi by the people. But as for you, do not be called rabbi, for only one is your teacher, and you are all brothers and sisters. And do not call anyone on earth your father, for only one is your father, he who is in heaven. And do not be called leaders, for only one is your leader, that is, Christ. But the greatest of you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut the kingdom of heaven in front of people, for you do not enter it yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel around on sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, Whoever swears by the temple, that is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple is obligated. You fools and blind men! Which is more important, the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold? And you say, whoever swears by the altar, that is nothing, but whoever swears by the offering that is on it is obligated. You blind men, which is more important, the offering or the altar that sanctifies the offering? Therefore, the one who swears by the altar, swears both by the altar and by everything on it. And the one who swears by the temple, swears both by the temple and by him who dwells in it. And the one who swears by heaven, swears both by the throne of God and by him who sits upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness but these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides, who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and of the dish, so that the outside of it may also become clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside they are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. So you too, outwardly appear righteous to people, 
but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs for the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous. And you say, If we had been living in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partners with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves, that you are essons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of the guilt of your fathers. You snakes, you offspring of vipers, how will you escape the sentence of hell? Therefore, behold, I am sending you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will flog in your synagogues, and persecute from city to city. So that upon you will fall the guilt of all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Truly I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who have been sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were unwilling. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate. For I say to you, from now on you will not see me until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus left the temple area and was going on his way when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. But he responded and said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another, which will not be torn down. And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will mislead many people. And you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. Then they will hand you over to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. And at that time many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will rise up and mislead many people. And because lawlessness is increased most people's love will become cold. But the one who endures to the end is the one who will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Therefore when you see the abomination of desolation which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on the house stop must not go down to get things out of his house. And whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. But woe to those women who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Moreover, pray that when you flee, it will not be in the winter, or on a Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation, such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will again. And if those days had not been cut short, no life would have been saved, but for the sake of the elect those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or, He is over here, do not believe him. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will provide great signs and wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance. So if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out, or, Behold, 
he is in the inner rooms, do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. But immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet blast, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Now learn the parable from the fig tree, as soon as its branch has become tender and sprouts its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you too, when you see all these things recognize that he is near, right at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. At that time there will be two men in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one will be left. Therefore be on the alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have been on the alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. For this reason you must be ready as well, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. Who then is the faithful and sensible slave whom his master put in charge of his household slaves, to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that evil slave says in his heart, My master is not coming for a long time. And he begins to beat his fellow slaves, and he eats and drinks with those habitually drunk. Then the master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect, and at an hour that he does not know. And he will cut him in two and assign him a place with the hypocrites, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish, and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take extra oil with them. But the prudent ones took oil in flasks with their lamps. Now while the groom was delaying, they all became drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight there finally was a shout, Behold, the groom! Come out to meet him! Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish virgins said to the prudent ones, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. However, the prudent ones answered, No, there most certainly would not be enough for us and you too, go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the groom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Yet later, the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, because you do not know the day nor the hour. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey, who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another, two, and to another, 
one, each according to his own ability, and he went on his journey. The one who had received the five talents immediately went and did business with them, and earned five more talents. In the same way the one who had received the two talents earned two more. But he who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Now after a long time the master of those slaves asterisk came and asterisk settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have earned five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things, I will put you in charge of many things, enter the joy of your master. Also the one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have earned two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things, I will put you in charge of many things, enter the joy of your master. Now the one who had received the one talent also came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. And I was afraid, so I went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you still have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You worthless, lazy slave. Did you know that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter seed? Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and in my arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore, take the talent away from him, and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more shall be given, and he will have an abundance, but from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. And throw the worthless slave into the outer darkness, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. And all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another, just as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat, I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink, I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me, I was sick, and you visited me, I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you something to drink? And when did we see you as a stranger, and invite you in, or naked, and clothe you? And when did we see you sick, or in prison, and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed people, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat, I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they themselves also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or as a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me, either. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. When Jesus had finished all these words, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, 
and the Son of Man is to be handed over for crucifixion. At that time the chief priests and the elders of the people were gathered together in the courtyard of the high priest named Caiaphas. And they plotted together to arrest Jesus covertly and kill him. But they were saying, not during the festival, otherwise a riot might occur among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, at the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster vial of very expensive perfume, and she poured it on his head as he was reclining at the table. But the disciples were indignant when they saw this, and said, Why this waste? For this perfume could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you bothering the woman? For she has done a good deed for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. For when she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests fifteen and said, What are you willing to give me to betray him to you? And they set out for him thirty pieces of silver. And from then on he looked for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. Now on the first day of unleavened bread the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man, and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near, I am keeping the Passover at your house with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. Being deeply grieved, they began saying to him, Each one, Surely it is not I, Lord. And he answered, he who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man is going away just as it is written about him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus asterisk said to him, You have said it yourself. Now while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. 27 And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is being poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it with you, new, in my Father's kingdom. And after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus asterisk said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. But Peter replied to him, Even if they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you that this very night, before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. 35 Peter asterisk said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. All the disciples said the same thing as well. Then Jesus Asterisk came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and Asterisk told his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him, and began to be grieved and distressed. 38 Then he Asterisk said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, to the point of death, remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them, and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, 
Let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he asterisk came to the disciples and asterisk found them sleeping, and he asterisk said to Peter, So, you men could not keep watch with me for one hour. 41 Keep watching and praying, so that you do not come into temptation, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink from it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them again, and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he asterisk came to the disciples and asterisk said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hurry is at hand and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's go, behold, the one who is betraying me is near. And while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who came from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he who was betraying him gave them a sign previously, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one, arrest him. And immediately Judas went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus reached and drew his sword, and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus asterisk said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all those who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? How then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must happen this way. At that time Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as you would against a man inciting a revolt? Every day I used to sit within the temple grounds teaching, and you did not arrest me fifty-six but all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets will be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were gathered together. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and he came inside and sat down with the officers to see the outcome. Now the chief priests and the entire council kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. They did not find any, even though many false witnesses came forward. But later on two came forward. And said, This man stated, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to him, Do you offer no answer for what these men are testifying against you? But Jesus kept silent. And the high priest said to him, I place you under oath by the living God, to tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus asterisk said to him, You have said it yourself. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power, and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need do we have of witnesses? See, you have now heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and beat him with their fists, and others slapped him. And said, Prophesy to us, you Christ, who is the one who hit you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a slave woman came to him and said, You two were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he had gone out to the gateway, another slave woman saw him and asterisk said to those who were there, 
this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it, with an oath, I do not know the man. A little later the bystanders came up and said to Peter, You really are one of them as well, since even the way you talk gives you away. Then he began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the statement that Jesus had made, Before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now when morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. Then when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that he had been condemned, he felt remorse and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? You shall see to it yourself. And he threw the pieces of silver into the temple sanctuary and left, and he went away and hanged himself. The chief priests took the pieces of silver and said, It is not lawful to put them in the temple treasury, since it is money paid for blood. And they conferred together and with the money bought the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. For this reason that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then that which was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one whose price had been set by the sons of Israel. And they gave them for the potter's field, just as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor questioned him, saying, So you are the king of the Jews? And Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not offer any answer. Then Pilate Asterisk said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? And still he did not answer him in regard to even a single charge, so the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the Passover feast the governor was accustomed to release for the people any one prisoner whom they wanted. And at that time they were holding a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the people gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas, or Jesus who is called Christ? For he knew that it was because of envy that they had handed him over. And while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message, saying, See that you have nothing to do with that righteous man, for last night I suffered greatly in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, and to put Jesus to death. And the governor said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate Asterisk said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all Asterisk said, Crucify him. But he said, Why, what evil has he done? Yet they kept shouting all the more, saying, Crucify him. Now when Pilate saw that he was accomplishing nothing, but rather that a riot was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood, you yourself shall see. And all the people replied, His blood shall be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them, but after having Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole Roman cohort to him. And they stripped him and put a red cloak on him. And after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand, and they knelt down before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him, and took the reed and beat him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the cloak off him and put his own garments back on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they were coming out, 
they found a man of Cyrene named Simon, whom they compelled to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they gave him wine mixed with bile to drink, and after tasting it, he was unwilling to drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among themselves by casting lots. And sitting down, they began to keep watch over him there. And above his head they put up the charge against him which read, This is Jesus the King of the Jews. At that time two rebels asterisk were being crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those passing by were speaking abusively to him, shaking their heads. And saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He has trusted in God, let God rescue him now, if he takes pleasure in him, for he said, I am the Son of God. And the rebels who had been crucified with him were also insulting him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour darkness fell upon all the land until the ninth hour. 46 And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lima Sabbatanii, that is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those who were standing there, when they heard it, said, This man is calling for Elijah. And immediately one of them ran, and taking a sponge, he filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed, and gave him a drink. But the rest of them said, Let us see if Elijah comes to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. Also the tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now as for the centurion and those who were with him keeping guard over Jesus, when they saw the earthquake and the other things that were happening, they became extremely frightened and said, Truly this was the Son of God. And many women were there watching from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee while caring for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Now when it was evening, a rich man from Arimathea came, named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut out in the rock, and he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and went away. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary, sitting opposite the tomb. Now on the next day, that is, the day which is after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together with Pilate. And they said, Sir, we remember that when that deceiver was still alive, he said, After three days I am rising. Therefore, give orders for the tomb to be made secure until the third day, otherwise, his disciples may come and steal him, and say to the people, He has risen from the dead, and the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard, go, make it as secure as you know how. And they went and made the tomb secure with the guard, sealing the stone. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the tomb. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone, and sat upon it. 
and his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook from fear of him and became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to report to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Rejoice! And they came up and took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus asterisk said to them, Do not be afraid, go, bring word to my brothers to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Now while they were on their way, some of the men from the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers. And said, You are to say, His disciples came at night and stole him while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed, and this story was widely spread among the Jews and is to this day. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated to them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I commanded you, and behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age.